The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. Last summer, I went on a short holiday to wonderfully cosmopolitan Mexico City. It was Thursday, my wife had of course gone shopping, and I had a few hours to kill. One of the hotel porters told me about this cellar bar, and... That's he, Mr. Newland. Michael, this is uh, Mr. Newland. He's from the United States. He's very interested in true stories such as yours. I don't want to embarrass him. Maybe we should... Uh... Embarrass him? Why, nothing can embarrass him. Well, he tells his story to anybody for a little wine. What are you buying some wine? All right. Eh, por favor, una botella de vino para el señor, para dárselo al otro. You're sure this is, uh... It's the right thing to do. I could have been manager of an enterprise. I was handsome too, handsome. But she promised me so much, she promised me everything and... Then she treated me so shamefully. Oh, really? It's five minutes after nine. We're already an hour late. Then we'll be two hours late. You're reasonable, don't we? The door. Oh, this is not the way. After all those centuries, when you have at least learned to comb my hair, Take a letter properly, or keep my books properly, or do something properly. I'm sorry. Both of you bore me so. He was his fading Irish charm. And you, well, while I even you and you, I don't know why. I really do my very best, man. Yeah, I really do my very best, madam. Bring the necklace. No, no, no. Call Mr. Barry for his little performance. <laughs> he is so fond of my necklace. He loves to touch it. You know, one day, just for a joke, I'm going to buy him one of those, those little things the jewelers wear in their eyes when they make a prey of. What are you are waiting for? <laughs> Countess Lorenzi wants you to help her, her with her necklace. Darling, we're going to have to think of some absolutely outrageous lie about why we're so late. I leave all outrageous lies to you, dear boy. always did give me so much trouble. But you put it on me so often, you should be able to do it with your eyes closed. Well, I, I'll do it. I, All right. I'll do it, darling. Take your time. Take your time. There. There now, there you are. Darling, you know, you look positively radiant tonight. 
But you always look at my necklace when you make your pretty speeches. Oh, Countess, why do you have to tease me so much? Tease you? But it is a remarkable necklace. When you are old, it makes you young. And when you are plain, it makes you beautiful. Grace, tonight, dozens of young men, slender young men, will crowd around me. And Michael will get absolutely furious. Won't you? Yes. It's because I have a jealous nature, you know. Furious. So there is my beauty secret. If you want Michael to notice you, you need more than a pink nose. Come on, Countess, now you're embarrassing her. Embarrassing her. Bring the car around the front. Yes, yes, of course. You know, you behave quite ridiculous in front of him. Pardon? You make yourself such a fool. Fool? You know what? If you are very, very, very good, I will give him to you for Christmas. But I'm pleased. Isn't that a lovely Christmas present? A beautiful Irish boy. Oh, a little bit too fat. Madame? And slightly beyond his prime. But still very useful. Please. <laughs> no, no. Please. Ah, please. she was. I don't know how many times I told her. The doctor warned her again and again about her heart. Cut down on your activities, he told her. Or you'll be sorry. But... Oh, no. She just wouldn't listen. I tried to help. But before I could reach her, she was dead. The Contessa dead. It just doesn't seem possible, does it? I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Uh, it's perfectly all right, Mr. Rivas. Please sit down, Miss Harkness. You both know that Countess Ferrezi had no living relatives. Yes, it is a shame, isn't it? But I mean, she didn't even have a little niece to come visit her during the holidays. Well, I'm thankful to say that at least I could make her last years less unhappy. Yes, I'm sure. In this letter, accompanying her will, she asked that both of you attend the reading as interested parties. I told you, Miss Harkness. You see, she hasn't forgotten you. Mm. And with all her faults, she had a generous heart. I'll read the pertinent paragraphs, skipping for the moment items relating to taxes and so forth. Fine, fine. Good idea. Go ahead. That's nothing to worry about, Miss Harkness. To Grace, Evelyn Harkness, who has served me as well as she could for many years, I leave my house at 6-7 Avenue Barzoni and all the furnishings therein. What? I don't understand. What? I further bequeath all other property 
personal and real, covered in the enclosed inventory, specifically to include my most prized possession, my diamond necklace. She didn't even mention me. My name isn't even mentioned in there, is it? Yes, Mr. Barry. I leave to Michael Berry the sum of 30 centavos, which should be enough for bus fare to his young lady friend at 1216 Rolando Plaza. I am certain that tranquility that Mr. Berry will feel, knowing he is no longer in danger of being discovered, will more than compensate for any monetary consideration. still quite a lot. Miss Harkness. champagne now. Just for tonight. Ah. Well, would you open it for me? I don't know what, but I will, ma'am. Ah. So we're the new lady of the house, are we? Hmm? <laughs> How's it feel? Frankly, I, I am still in a daze. It has only been a week. Oh. Ah. You know, frankly, may I tell you something? You don't act like the lady of the house. And you still haven't told me why you sent for me. I will. Was it to show me your new position in life? Mr. Barry, I am not like that. Oh. Oh, look, look. Look at that beautiful young Irish boy, will you? I mean, a trifle to see, though, huh? Huh? I wanted to talk to you. Did you? What about? About several things. First of all, I want you to know that I think that she treated you very badly. I often heard her promise you. The moon? Oh, yes, of course, I remember that well. You know what I wound up with? Thirty centavos. And even at that, she cheated me, because the bus fare was forty centavos. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. I, I, I'm forgetting my manners, may I? Of course. All you want. Huh? And then help yourself to the order. They may be stale, but I, I had the maid. Make the kind that you like. <laughs> Matching me with a maid. <laughs> well, here's your good help. Thank you. I really meant what I said. I mean, about the Countess. She had no right to treat you as she did. Tell me something, Dom. Hmm? You're all right. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. You're all right. You got a good heart. Think of what a fool I made of myself in that attorney's office. I, I couldn't tell, but I suppose I, when I heard that 30 centavos, it was enough to drive me out of my mind. What's it for? Yes, it If she ever found out about me, I'll never know. You know, when I think of that old woman. Don't think of her. Makes my blood boil inside of me. How she degraded me. Rub my nose in that dirt, you know. I could have been something. I really couldn't. I still can, you know. I could have been manager of an enterprise. Yes, you, you still can. You still no, can. No, no, no. That's too late. No, no. And when I think of the many times that I sat here in this chair waiting for her to open that door. You shouldn't give up. Well, that's fine. That's very easy for you to say, my dear. You're, you're young and you're still very handsome. Handsome? Yes, sure. Handsome. It's been my undoing. About that 
young girl? Hmm? Nina? Oh, we know all about her. You going to marry her? Marry her? Oh, you know, you know, when she heard about the will, you know what happened? She just... And I haven't seen a hide in her hair ever since. But did you ever think... Is she very young? Well, I don't know. She's about 25, 26, something like that, I guess. I thought she looked about 30. And the Countess was much too old. Forgive me for being forward, but did you ever consider that a woman your own age could offer you a great deal more than either one of them? Understanding, companionship. Excuse me. <laughs> Listen to me. Babbling away. What did you say? Listen to your name. In just a minute. What did you say about Nina a moment ago? Hmm? Nina, what about her? A moment ago you said something about her. Nina? Yes, Nina. Well, why do we have to talk about Nina? You haven't commented on my new clothes. It is very ungallant of you, Mr. Barry. You always spoke of how lovely the Countess looked. And I went to the same dressmaker. Oh, goodness, I... They charged me enough for the hair. I, I hope there's some improvement. What was it you said about Nina a moment ago, huh? Come on, tell me. You know, there, there's only one thing missing, and I'd be right back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, do you hear me? Come back here. How did you know how old she was? How'd you know what she looked like, even? Come on and open up this door and answer me! Come on! Oh, yes. Now I see it. That's how the old woman found out about us, because you saw us together someplace, isn't that it? And you told her. And that's why she tried to ruin me. Come on and open up this door and answer me! Open it up! Oh, come on now. No use in trying to pretend to me. Come on, you would have fainted. Come on. the lock is for. What a nice way to say hello. Oh, I can say goodbye much better. No, Nina, you're a terrible girl. I always told you. Uh, you know that I've spent almost a whole week looking for you. You should have spent it looking for another nice, rich old woman. Nina, Nina, please. Please, don't say that. Please, I beg you. You still wear too much hair oil. Aren't you even going to ask me where I came by? I'm huh? much too busy for riddles. I've got a date. With who? With somebody who can show me some fun. Somebody with something in his wallet besides pictures of himself. Somebody who'll fit mistakes instead of pipe dreams. Also somebody who's not 17 years older than me. You stole it. Oh, no, no. The Countess promised it to me a thousand times, and I insist on people keeping their promises. I never saw anything so beautiful in my life. Yes, it is, isn't it? 180 diamonds. And each and every one of them absolutely perfect. Do you know it's worth more than everything else she had put together? You must have stolen it. Well, now, why talk about it? I'm keeping you from your date. Yes, I think I'll have to be going now. Going? That's what I merely dropped around to say goodbye. Unfortunately, I'm cursed with good manners. Going where? Oh, I don't know. Rome, Madrid, Paris, Havana, I don't know. Any place at all. You try to sell that necklace and the only place you'll go is to jail. Oh, no, darling, you're wrong. Not if I sell it one diamond at a time. 
But here now, forgive me. I'm keeping you from your handsome young man. Goodbye, dear. Wait. Don't go. I've missed you, Michael. Have you? Really? Of course I have. Yes, of course you have. Luke, you promised me so much. And then to end up with nothing. You know how you felt about the old lady when you ended up with nothing. Oh, it's a foolish date. And he's the most foolish man imaginable. Don't go. No, darling. I am the most foolish man imaginable. Darling, I tell you what. Why don't you finish dressing and pack a suitcase and I'll be back for you in an hour. What are you going to do? Well, there was a man in town who said that he would buy some of these diamonds. I called him up and he told me to meet him at his hotel at 8.30. I'll be back then, darling. Michael, hmm. may I see them just once more? <laughs> really? They're so beautiful. They, they almost hypnotize you. It seems so wrong to break them up. Yes, well, I imagine when you see how much money they realize that you'll feel much better about it. Now, come on, give it to me, darling. Just once. Oh. Just for a second. Darling, look. Just that I can see myself in the mirror with them on my look, throat. Darling, I promised the man 8.30. Dearest, just for a second. Oh, well, all right then. Come on, I'll help you with the clasp. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. Now that they're mine, I don't feel at all nervous about them. I never saw anything so beautiful in my life. Look at me, Michael. Just look at me. Come on, let's have them back. Tony, what's the matter? <gasps> Nina, Tony, what's the matter with you? Take them up. Nina. <laughs> They're shocking me. Oh! Help! Help! They're shocking me. Oh, help! Help! It moved. It moved. It moved. Well, say, young Mr. Mullen. What happened to him? What could happen? They put him in a place for the criminals or, uh, como se dice, uh, loco, the, the mad. How long was he there? Eight, nine years, senor. Quien sabe. All right, thank you. Well, what do you think? Did the necklace really move? If it did, it isn't the first time that a necklace seemed to have a life of its own. Around the turn of the century, a lady in Brighton, England, was most certainly strangled by her string of pearls. But how could such a thing possibly happen? Well, the psychic answer would be that somehow the vengeful spirit of the Countess managed to impart some sort of life, an evil life, to her necklace. Or if you want a more rational answer, as Jose de Porter says, Quien sabe? Who knows? In a moment, something about next week. Next week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience. Man's adventure in the world of the unknown. That mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond. Uh.